Hi everyone, my name is James and I'm with Kings Fine Woodworking. Today is gonna to be video three of the 16 week free online woodworking course. And today I'm gonna to cover woodworking glues. I'm going to cover all five types of the most common woodworking glues that you'll encounter and when to use each one and what each one's strong points are and what each one's weak points are. Uh, questions about glue are probably the most common email questions that I get. People wanna know what glue to use for what, uh, what's the best glue for this project, what's the best glue for an outdoor project, what uh, of the three different tight bonds, which do I use for which scenario, and things like that. I'm gonna completely cover all that today. Okay, so the first glue that I'm gonna talk about today is polyurethane glue. This is a polyurethane glue. You might be a little bit more familiar with uh, Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue is probably the biggest manufacturer of polyurethane glues in the United States. But this is another manufacturer. And polyurethane glues definitely have some advantages. Uh, they have an open time of about 30 minutes, which is really nice. It's longer than the PVA glues, the tight bond type PVA glues that you might be familiar with. And they stick to everything. So they don't just stick to wood. Uh, they'll stick to wood, metal, plastic, rubber, whatever. You, you glue them together and they'll stick to it. And uh, they also have very strong, very high bond strength, which is nice. They have some drawbacks in that uh, polyurethane glues will foam as they're curing. So it's important to have anything that you uh, build with this glue clamped up very tightly to minimize the foam that comes out. And then of course cleanup is quite a bit messier with polyurethane glues. So they have their place there. They're plenty strong, they'll stick to everything, and they have a long open time, which we'll, we'll discuss in just a second. But the cleanup's a little tougher and they're a little bit messier. Okay, so there's gonna be many definitions that we talk about during the course of this presentation. And I'm actually going to give you a download, a uh, downloadable sheet that covers all of them in detail. Uh, it's, it's just a free download on the website. You can get it and go over that for future reference. Uh, but for starters, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about open time. Okay, so open time. Open time, you can think of it as application time. It's the amount of time you have to get the glue applied uh, and get the clamps on. Many PVA glues have maybe a five minute open time. So open time means from the minute you start squeezing the glue on here, you have to spread the glue out. You gotta put glue on your other, other piece of wood, the other side, you've gotta spread that glue out. Then you have to put the joint together and you have to clamp it. That total amount of time that that takes, that's considered the open time. Once it's under clamping pressure, then the drying can begin, or the curing, I suppose, depending on what adhesive we're talking about, that can begin. So open time for a lot of PVA glues, like I mentioned, is five minutes. If you exceed that five minute span, for example, if you have a big and complicated glue up and you exceed that five minute span, span the glue will of course dry or cure and it will become hard and strong, but it won't really be what's considered a serviceable bond because you've exceeded the open time. So if you take 15 minutes to do glue up because you've got mini boards that you have to glue together, then when it's all done and the piece has dried the next day, you take the clamps off. If you were to measure the bond strength, it would be significantly weaker. So it's important for you to try to stick within the open times that are listed on the glues. If you have a PVA glue or a polyurethane glue that has an open time of five minutes, then get your glue up done in five minutes. If it has an open time that's 30 minutes, get your glue up done within 30 minutes. So open time is the application time uh, that you have in order to get the piece clamped up uh, and secure before the glue begins to set. And if you exceed that time, you won't actually have what's considered a serviceable, serviceable bond. Okay, so the next glue that I wanna talk about is hide glue. Hide glue is, hide glue is made from collagen which is a connective tissue found in animals. And collagen, in fact, the word collagen comes from the Greek word kolos, which actually means glue in Greek. High glue has been used for thousands of years, and it's a very traditional uh, woodworking glue. It's not used as much these days because it's a little more tedious and it's not quite as good as the, more, as the modern glues that we use today. Uh, high glue is not waterproof at all, so if you're, whatever you're building is gonna get wet or exposed to water, then it'll fall apart if you're using high glue. Um, high glue traditionally has a very short shelf life also, uh, maybe around a month or so if it's in liquid form. Uh, tight bond has, has uh, ad modified high glue actually to maintain its liquid form for a considerably longer period of time. I think it's up to a year and a half and there are expiration dates on the bottle. So if you get the tight bond version, uh, it'll last longer. It's still genuine, 100% high glue. They've been, they've been uh, manufacturing it for a long time. 
One of the traditional ways uh, that hide glue was used, has been used for a long time, is you buy it in chips, dehydrated, dried chips. You put it into a melting pot, you melt it down, and you use it. Um, there are some difficulties with that because you have to make sure that you set enough aside for the project that you're working on. And once you've gone through the process of heating it up, then you only have a limited amount of time to work with it. And if you don't heat up enough, it takes quite a while to heat up some more to keep going. So it can be a little tedious, so you need, need a little bit of preparation to do that. It does have advantages, however, if you use hide glue in your building chairs, uh, for example, and if your chairs come apart like many chairs that were built 100 years ago were put together with hide glue, if they start to become weak or the joint separates, you can actually detach all of the joints in the chair that are made of hide glue just by heating it up. The hide glue will come apart. You can reprepare the surface of the wood and glue it again and put it back together. So the advantage is you can take a joint apart and put a joint back together with hide glue. You can't do that with any other modern woodworking adhesive. So there are some advantages there. Uh, for me personally, the disadvantages of hide glue outweigh the advantages. So I rarely use it. Uh, I do use it occasionally. One thing I used it for was to glue a leather face to my, to my vise that's here on my uh, assembly table. And that, that's because if once the leather wears out or has problems, I can use a heat gun, apply it to the leather, and that will melt the hide glue, and I can peel the leather off, clean it, and then you know put a fresh uh, surface of leather on at some point in the future. So it does have some uses. It's just a little more limited uh, for my type of woodworking. It might be something fun to experiment with if you want to try some more traditional woodworking. But anyway, that's the second of the five uh, primary glues that we'll talk about. Okay, so the next glue that I'm going to talk about is cyanoacrylic glue. Uh, some people just call it CA glue. And CA glue comes in a variety of viscosities. So this is thin. The viscosity of this is somewhere uh, similar to water, if you can see the glue uh, just bouncing around in here. And that's, that's good uh, for some joints if the joint is fairly uh, loose, or fairly tight, I'm sorry, that works. Uh, it also comes in a medium, which is a little bit thicker. Uh, it comes in a thick, and it comes in a gel, which is very thick. And CA glues also can be bonded instantaneously with the use of an accelerator. Uh, so an accelerator is uh, more, more or less a catalyst that you would spray onto the adhesive or onto a surface that you're going to bond the adhesive to, and it will cause the glue to set instantaneously. So there are some really good applications for CA glue. And most frequently, I would use it to tack something temporarily. CA glue doesn't make a very strong bond. Um, it's nowhere near as strong as, uh, as a PVA or, or a polyurethane or even a high glue bond. So I would only use it to hold something temporarily. Like oftentimes I'll be putting hinges on the back of a project and I'll want to tack them down temporarily with CA glue and I'll show you how I do that. So I am going to pretend like these two boards represent the back of my jewelry box or whatever it is I'm going to be putting hinges on. So I'll put them together and I will set the hinge in place exactly in the orientation that it's going to go on the box. Now in this particular case, this hinge needs to be set up so that the barrel of the hinge lines up exactly with the seam of the back of the box, not tilted one way or the other. So I'll line that up straight and then I'll hold it down firmly on one side and I'll lift the hinge on the other side. I can apply a little bit of CA glue to the hinge itself and then I'll apply some of the accelerator to the board. I'll flop the hinge down and hold that for just a second and that will cure instantly. And then I can rotate this around. I'm, I'm rotating it I suppose more for camera purposes here. I'll hold the first side down. I'll lift the other side up. I'll do the same thing. Put a drop of the CA glue and I'll spray some of the activator on the wood. And oops, I got messed up there. I'll put it back together and I'll hold that down for just a minute, uh, well just a second or two, and that's it. So that's cured, and now that hinge is exactly where it needs to be. Sometimes it's hard to hold a hinge in place and put screws in, but in this case uh, the hinge holds itself until I can take the time to drill and put the screws in, and that allows me uh, for perfect positioning. So some of CA's advantages are of course firstly that it will bond instantaneously or very close to instantaneously. It also bonds to a variety of substrates. So it will bond, you know, metal, glass, wood, things like that. It just doesn't have to be, uh, it's not required to be a porous surface necessarily. And some of the drawbacks are that it has a toxic odor. So you wouldn't want to be standing over it inhaling large quantities of it because it, it smells horrible and it's not good for you. 
Another drawback is that most CA glues have a very short uh, shelf life. Uh, I used to buy all of my CA glues at a hobby store, and there are many hobby CA glues that are out there available. A lot of them only have a one or two month shelf life. Uh, even new and manufactured, they've only got a shelf life of maybe up to 12 months. Um, Type Bond has formulated a CA glue. Sounds like a Type Bond commercial. It's not really, though. Well, it is, I guess. They gave me this for free. Um, but they didn't pay me or anything, and I, I've been using Type Bond for a long time. But Type Bond's formulated one that lasts for two years. So for the woodworker, all CA glues really are created equally. It doesn't really matter whose you buy. Um, it makes you know no difference at all. They're all going to work about the same. They're all going to have sort of a low-level bond strength. They're all going to cure instantaneously, and they're all going to stick just about anything to anything else. So that's the, that's the deal with CA glue. Oh, something else I would need to mention about CA glue is that when the CA glue cures, it, uh, it creates an exothermic reaction, which means it gets very hot. So if you spill some on your fingers and it cures on your fingers, it's going to burn you. Uh, it's not going to send you to the hospital, but it's going to hurt. Uh, and if you stick your fingers together, you're going to have to do something to uh, get your fingers apart. They make debonder. Uh, a lot of people make it. I don't know if Tight Bond makes it or not. Uh, they might, but uh, I got this one at a hobby store. And it's just a chemical that actually dissolves CA glue, and it doesn't really dissolve your skin. So if you stick something together that you don't want to have stuck, if it's wood or something else, you can usually just break it apart. But if it sticks fingers so well, CA glue is actually used medically uh, after surgeries. If there's a large open wound, they'll actually seal the wound with CA glue. Uh, on the battlefield, it's used to seal up really bad wounds. So it's, it sticks skin really good. So if you get your skin stuck together like your fingers, you're going to want to use debonder here, you know, copiously, and work them slowly to get the, to get the CA glue unstuck so that you don't tear your skin. So if you're going to buy CA glue, it's not a bad idea to get a little bit of debonder. Okay, so occasionally we need a glue that's 100% waterproof. For that, the only thing we really have is epoxy. Uh, epoxy is a, is a very strong glue. Um, it also makes a really sturdy finish. If you have outdoor furniture, for example, uh, you can actually use epoxy as the finish itself. Apply that to the surface of the wood. It gives you a crystal clear finish, and it's many times stronger than the best spar urethane out there. Epoxy is an adhesive that has to cure. It comes in parts. So there are two parts. You mix them together, and you can uh, uh, mix them with a measuring cup. Um, we, usually get, uh, we usually get these, and we take... Uh, mixing sticks, things like this to, to mix them up. It's also important to, to measure them correctly. Uh, a lot of manufacturers, if you buy a kit like this, they will come with pumps and the pumps will tell you, you know, which, which of these they go on to. And so it, the pumps are metered so you get the exact amount of epoxy out that you need. We take the time, we mix it up in the container. Uh, it's not a bad idea to wear latex gloves so you don't get the epoxy on you. Epoxy also has a little bit of a toxic odor uh, so you don't want to inhale that too much. If you're sensitive to it, you might want to wear a respirator so you don't have to breathe that. Um, any, any gloves will do. Nitro, we use these gloves uh, that come with the, usually the manufacturer gives you some. When those run out, I usually buy gloves at Amazon. I like the nitrile gloves. They're a little bit more durable, a little bit more comfortable if you're going to wear for an extended period of time. As an adhesive, epoxy has a unique set of properties that aren't found in any other woodworking glues. Uh, for starters, we can get epoxies with extremely long open times. So you can you can buy the resin, and then you can buy the hardener in different speeds. So this is a fast hardener, and it'll tell you how long you have to apply it. And you can also get slow hardener, and you can get very slow. And so you can have an open time as much as an hour or two or more. So if you have uh, a project that is a very complicated glue up and there's a lot of stuff to do and it's going to take you a while, then you might want to go with a slow hardener and you can have up to an hour or more uh, open time. You know, so you have a, lo a long time to get your glue set up and epoxy is really the only glue that's going to allow you to do that. Um, one other thing that epoxy has is it has gap filling ability. And we talk about that a lot. Does it have good gap filling ability or or bad gap filling ability, and I'll explain what that means. So to understand the uh, gap filling ability, we have to talk about the two properties that glue has that makes it glue. Uh, there's one, one chemical property called adhesion and one chemical property called cohesion. 
All glues exhibit both characteristics, um, adhe adhesive properties and cohesive properties. An adhesive property is the ability of the glue to stick to a substrate, like to wood. So glues obviously need to have a high adhesive property, ad high, high adhesive strength, so they'll bond to the wood really well. But another property is cohesive strength, and cohesive strength is a measure of how well that adhesive bonds to itself. And in PVAs, for example, PVA glues have a very low cohesive strength. So if you have a large gap between two pieces of wood and you try to fill that with a PVA glue, it's very weak. PVA glue does not bond to itself very well because it has a low cohesive strength and the joint will simply break. So you want the amount of glue that's glued to other glue to be as small as possible. In fact, in your typical PVA joint, you should have about four one thousandths of an inch of thickness uh, between the wood. That's about the, the thickness of the adhesive that you want. Anything larger than that, and you're going to significantly lose strength in that bond because PVA just has a low cohesive strength. That's not the case at all with epoxy. Epoxy has a very high cohesive strength, and so you can fill giant gaps with epoxies um, for that reason. And that's one of, the, one of the many good uses that it has in the wood shop. So epoxies have also become very popular in some subsections of woodworking, such as for wood turners. Wood turners like to mix uh, epoxy resins with different substances, uh, different types of wood or different wood shavings or different particles of wood and make turnings with them. Um, it's also epoxy is the ingredient that's used with this latest craze that's going around with river tables. Uh, they'll use a resin, uh, fin a resin that goes between the two pieces of wood and that's actually an epoxy resin. Uh, epoxy resin is also the only thing that can stabilize uh, woods like spalted maple and make them suitable for woodworking. Um, spalted means if the wood uh, gets exposed to a fungus while it's drying or even maybe while it's just sitting out in the yard or out in the field, uh, the fungus will begin to eat at the wood and attack it and it makes a really beautiful creative uh, pattern or, or grain look on the surface of the wood and that's great. But unfortunately, the more spalting that occurs, the more damaged the wood is and it, it's not really structurally sound anymore for a lot of woodworking uses. But we can stabilize that by putting that in epoxy and we can use it, put a vacuum chamber, we can draw epoxy up into the fibers of the wood and then we can turn it and it, you know those turnings turn out beautifully. Uh, epoxy is also the adhesive of choice if you have surface problems with your wood. If your wood is checked or cracked, if there are voids or there are not holes, and you want to make the surface smooth for finishing and to have a nice looking piece, then you would fill any uh, voids or cracks like that with epoxy. So there are even occasionally situations where you can't get the adhesive to go between the joint. When I, I built this assembly table, I had joints that were like this, but they were already in place. And if I have a situation like that and I can't glue it beforehand, we can actually take epoxy and we can run an epoxy fillet down the sides or at the corners. It's a little uh, concave uh, layer shape of epoxy, kind of like you'd be caulking a joint or something. And if you do that with epoxy, create an epoxy fillet, that creates a bond that's almost as strong as if you had glued the pieces together. Epoxy is really the only glue that you can do uh, that with. And finally, epoxy will bond anything to anything. Um, many glues will only bond wood or other porous substances together. Epoxy will bond much like CA does, and, and uh, it will bond wood to metal, to plastic, to glass, to concrete, or any combination. So it'll bond anything together with anything else, and that can also be handy. And so for me, epoxies are probably the second most important adhesives in my shop. And I, I actually buy it by the gallon. Uh, we buy, we get it from Total Boat. There's uh, several manufacturers that we can get it from. Uh, but I like this guy, these guys stuff. And as far as epoxy goes, when you, if you're a woodworker and you're buying it, you can consider that all epoxies are the same. Uh, there are many formulations. There's West Systems Epoxy. There's this stuff. Uh, West Systems is a marine epoxy. This is a marine epoxy. There are epoxies that are, you know, specialized to take the uh, take on the ocean environment, the salty environment. Uh, there are epoxies that are aerospace grade, meant to take uh, withstand extremely high temperatures and stuff like that. But in truth, it makes no difference what epoxy you buy, um, because for a woodworker, again, they're all going to perform exactly the same. What's convenient is what you need to look for is price. Uh, what's what's affordable? Can you buy it in big sizes for cheaper? Can you buy it in smaller sizes? Can you buy it in mid mid sizes? Uh, do they have a pumping system? Is it easy to measure? Some epoxy systems come like in a 5.2 to one. 
So if you had to measure ratios of 5.2 to 1 and you only wanted an ounce of epoxy, that's pretty hard to do. Um, some epoxies like these, they come with metered pumps. So one pump of this and one pump of this is a perfect mix. Whatever the ratio is, it already knows that that's a perfect mix. So that's kind of handy. Uh, so you don't really have to look at epoxies to see uh, if one's more suited for you. You just need to look at them and see is one more affordable or is one easier to pump. And, uh, and you know, this, this system of two to one or the system of five to one is really pretty convenient. So this is probably my go-to choice uh, for epoxies. Okay, so you're probably wondering why these things are sealed and that's because we're going to give them away. I talked to Total Boat before I did this and they gave me some samples to give away. So I'm gonna give away two sets of this stuff here. Let me see, where's the other one? Uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna give away a, a five to one and a two to one. Uh, set. This is the resin. This is the hardener and they, they come with pumps. They come with some mixing sticks. They come with some gloves So it's a kit and this stuff also I talked to tight bond before we began and I'm going to give away some CA glue I'm going to give away uh, two CA glues to one winner and two to the other and they'll come with uh, one of these uh, uh, Instant curing uh, containers as well, and I'm going to give away high glue to somebody who wants it and that brings me up to the final uh, thing that we're going to talk about today, and that's PVA glue. Okay, which is my go-to glue is actually Tight Bond. Um, so Tight Bond has been nice to us. They 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 don't actually they don't really sponsor anything that we do, but I, we started our YouTube channel in January of 2017, and I started woodworking actually in 1985. It was December I think of 1985, right after I was married. Uh, my wife's father, he was a woodworker, had been his whole life. He was an engineer and did a lot of woodworking. And so he started teaching me woodworking. And when we first started, I was using Tight Bond. So I've been using it for 33, 32, 33 years, something like that. And it's kind of stuff I've always used. And I talked about it a lot during my videos during the first year. And in December of last year, Tight Bond actually sent me a drum, a big 55 gallon of Tight Bond, just free. Uh, I don't have to advertise for them or do anything like that. Uh, so. I just thought I would reciprocate and talk a little bit about their glues and I called them up and I asked if they would mind giving some glue away and they did so that's why these are that's why some of these giveaways are occurring uh, but so let's talk about PVA and I'll talk a little bit about the history of it and why I like tight bond versus other PVA glues that might be out there so I probably talk about the shift away from hide glues so hide glues like I mentioned have been in use for thousands of years and we've kind of shifted most woodworkers have into using PVA glues. There, there's a lot of reasons for that. Hide glue is, the collagen is, is a protein based material and so proteins are susceptible to attack or invasion by uh, insects or mold uh, and you know if things get too hot uh, or too wet, then the joint can come apart as well. And I think, you know, gradually when modern chemistry came about, maybe in the early uh, 1900s, is when we started migrating away from uh, the hide glues and looking for an alternative that would be better. Okay, so PVA glues. PVA actually stands for polyvinyl acetate. Uh, many of you may know I'm actually an organic chemist. That was what I, I've done for the last 10 years of my life as I teach that at the college level. And you know I've been woodworking forever, but I really like to mix the two. So uh, one of the things that intrigues me about woodworking are the chemicals that are involved, like the chemicals in finishes, the chemicals in woodworking glues, adhesives, and things like that. So PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. It was invented in 1912 in Germany, actually, by uh, a scientist named Fritz Klatt. Now, when the first PVA glue came out, uh, he didn't actually invent it just specifically to make PVA glue, uh, but maybe within 10 years of that, it would begin uh, to see its first use as an adhesive. And when it came out, it wasn't very good. It wasn't great compared to tight bond. It was very hard to sand, uh, so the wood would sand before the glue would. It wasn't very easy to clean off. Um, the glue wasn't waterproof at all, had no water resistance. It wasn't very tacky, which is an important property of glue. Uh, it'd have a high tack. So when you first put pieces together, they, they have the tendency to want to stick. Originally, it wasn't very tacky. Uh, also, when it was cured or, or dried in this case, it didn't have a very high bond strength. Um, it also had a very poor open time. It was only good for a couple of minutes. And uh, it didn't have a very good shelf life. And one of the reasons that I like tight bond is because I, I read about this when we first started woodworking as tight bond was integral in the development of PVA glues for the last 60 years. Tight bond has modified polyvinyl acetate glues incrementally to make them better. 
Uh, they've increased the properties like sandability. So nowadays, uh, these glues sand just as easily as wood. So if you have glue left over or squeeze out that you didn't get uh, when you were first putting the joint together, it actually sands off very nicely. Um, if you need to do cleanup afterwards, even though the glue might be waterproof, if you pick a waterproof one, uh, it will still clean off with water because it's a waterborne. It's carried by water, the glue is. Uh, it has a very high tack now, so the glue will stick together with, uh, will stick the two pieces together initially, and that really helps in you know getting your uh, your pieces set up. Um, this has a much higher bond strength. In fact, today, Tight Bond 3 has a higher bond strength than anything here. It has a higher bond strength than epoxies. For years, for uh, uh, decades, epoxy had the highest bond strength of any adhesive, but that's not true anymore. Um, Case Western Reserve University did a scientific study and compared bond strength in three different or four different wood species with uh, tight bond, I think all three tight bonds, and uh, epoxies as well. And I'm actually going to include a copy of that in the handout that uh, will be available to download for free. And you can see the study that they did, and tight bond 3 had a higher bond strength than epoxy. So that's pretty remarkable. You know, they spent a lot of, of research and development in getting these glues like that. Uh, they've increased the open time. The open time for these guys is about five minutes, which is pretty good. And the open time for Type Bond 3 is 10 minutes. That's kind of why this is my preferred glue. Uh, and they have a much longer shelf life. PVA glues now will last two to three years, no problem. Um, you know, at the beginning, their shelf life was pretty short. So this is really has developed into about the best overall glue that there is. And there are a lot of companies out there that make glue other than Franklin Adhesive. Franklin Adhesives is the company that, that makes tight bond. A lot of other companies have, have copied it and have developed glues up to a certain point, but they don't have the research and engineering into them like tight bond has. And that's probably what fascinates me most about tight bond is reading about their history, um, the chemistry that they've put into their glues. And that's why I chose them at the beginning. And that's why I advertise them now. Um, I don't know, maybe they'll send me another 55 gallon drum in a couple of years when this one uh, gets finished. Uh, if, if not, doesn't matter, I'll still use it. I like the stuff. Okay, so I wanna cover the, uh, the primary differences between the three tight bonds. This is probably the question I get asked more about glue than any other question uh, through emails and everything else. And I guess before I mention that, I want to talk about uh, a group that we have. It's Kingspan Woodworking Community. It's a Facebook group, and we actually have quite a few members there. And it's uh, it's a group where I post articles all the time. I post links to sales that uh, manufacturers and woodworking uh, supply places uh, have. They usually notify me in advance of sales, and I put I put links there. And it's just a really good community where you can go in, you can share the work that you've done. Uh, you can ask for help. Uh, there are people of all different levels of woodworking skill in there from expert to beginner. And it's kind of a good community. Everybody supports each other. I'll put a link to the uh, to that page in the description in case you're interested. All right, so Type Bond Original was the one of the first formulas that they came out with after their uh, all of their chemical engineering and, and made it a really handy wood glue. So a little bit about this. This glue is the least expensive of the three, and it's the one that's most commonly chosen by a lot of woodworkers. Uh, this glue has a bond strength when it is fully dried of about 3,600 uh, pounds per square inch. The Type Bond 2 is a little bit stronger. It is about 3,750 pounds per square inch, and Type Bond 3 is the strongest. It's at 4,000 pounds per square inch of bond strength. Obviously, those are all very high. Uh, you wouldn't purchase this just because it has the highest bond strength because there's not a huge amount of difference between those. But let me go over some other differences. Uh, both Type Bond 1 and 2 have a five minute open time. And if you remember, open time is how long you have to get the glue up done before you clamp it. And so if you exceed that five minutes during your glue up, then when your bond is fully done and dried, it won't be nearly as strong as if you can get it accomplished within that five minute time span. Uh, type Bond 3, on the other hand, has a 10 minute open time. So that's pretty handy. That's one of the main reasons why I use Type Bond 3 for all of my projects. That 10 minute open time, for me, having double the open time makes a big difference. And that combined with the extra strength, I really like it. Uh, another thing is that uh, the temperatures that you can use these down to, um, this temperature you can use down to about 50 degrees, this temperature down to about 55, this one you can use it down to about 47. So if you happen to have a garage workshop where it's cold a lot and you want to do woodworking and you don't heat the shop, uh, you're going to get better results out of a glue that is functional uh, down to a lower temperature. 
And then I guess uh, probably the biggest, most important difference is the waterproof, uh, the difference between them. So Time Out Original is not waterproof at all. So you couldn't use this in any outdoor applications and you certainly couldn't use this for a cutting board, for example. Type Bond 2 does offer a pretty good degree of water resistance. I think they might even recommend that you can make cutting boards with this. Um, I don't know that I would make cutting boards with this, uh, but it is water resistant to some extent and can be definitely used outside. You wouldn't want it to be continuously wet. Um, but Type Bond 3 has the greatest amount of water resistance of any of the Type Bonds. And that's why this is my choice for cutting boards as well. So you could save a little bit of money in your shop if you had each of these or if you had maybe some Type Bond 1 original and some Type Bond 3. Uh, for me personally, I just have everything as, as Type Bond 3 since that's convenient for me to just stock one type of Type Bond. Uh, type Bond actually just sent me these today to talk about the differences. And in fact, they're going to be given away uh, at the end of the at the end of this uh, show. So that's uh, that's really the primary difference there. OK, speaking of the giveaway, if you're interested in trying any of these glues out, all you have to do is leave a comment below and tell me what you're interested in. If you want to try some epoxy, let me know. Um, and it'll include a set and uh, and the pumps uh, and some instructions. If you want to try Type Bonds woodworking glues, uh, just say the, the Type Bond uh, PVA glue. If you want to try Type Bonds hide glue, give me a link for that. If you want to try some CA glue, uh, give me, or not a link, sorry, give me a comment about that. If you want to try CA glue, give me a comment. And I'll just go through. If you want to try, uh, you know, if you if you wouldn't mind winning all of them, then you have to leave separate comments. And what we'll do is we'll go through the the uh, all the comments once this is over I think we're going to go through comments for about two weeks and then we'll just randomly pick and uh, and we'll contact you and we'll we'll mail them out if you win and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet and you like any of the content that we put out if you just hit that subscribe button down below and click the bell to get notified of uh, new videos as they come out that really helps us out a lot and I also want to say thank you to all of my patreon subscribers or, or patreon supporters uh, they basically made this video possible um, they help us out they help support the channel and I take most of my requests uh, for build videos and other videos like this there's been a lot of questions about glues lately and I create videos just specifically for that purpose uh, and another way to support the channel, if you're interested, is buying things from our links in the descriptions of the videos. We are an Amazon affiliate, and I put everything, time I, I make a video and I build stuff, I put a link uh, in the description for all the tools and supplies that we use, and that goes to Amazon. And if there's anything in there that you need, and you go to Amazon and you purchase that, then Amazon gives us a small commission from that to gives it to our channel and helps us uh, create new videos. So all of those things help out. And just once again, special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. Okay, so we're going to show you how to glue some things up. Um, and if you're just start, starting out, you don't necessarily need a whole lot of glue. Maybe this is all you need. But if you're addicted to glue like we are, Maybe you need to buy one of these. I want to talk about a couple things and I'm going to show you with a demonstration. I've got these two boards that I want to glue together. And I'm going to talk about clamping pressure and how to apply the glue. Uh, for clamping pressure, let's take a look at this. This board's about three and a half inches wide and it's about 10 inches long. So we're going to do a little quick calculation and see what size that ends up being. So according to Type Bond, you need 150 uh, PSI for soft woods, 150 to 200 for medium density woods like cherry or soft maple, and 200 to 300 pounds per square inch for hardwoods like oak and birch. So we've got uh, 3.5 inches by 10 inches. That's 35 square inches in this surface. And if I was to say a, an average for a hardwood of 200 pounds per square inch times the 35 square inches, that gives us 7,000 pounds of force that we actually have to glue this board together with. That might seem like a lot, but that's actually what's required. And there are many people on the internet who will tell you don't over clamp because you'll squeeze all the glue out. Uh, that's just a joke. That's not true. That clamping pressure is what is needed to force the glue, which is a very viscous substance, into the fibers of the wood to force the excess glue out and to force the wood together down to a point where you have a glue joint which is about four to five one thousandths of an inch thick. 
that's about the thickness of a piece of paper. If your glue joint is any thicker than that, then you're going to have too much of a glue joint and the PVA joint is going to become weak because at that point you are relying on the cohesive strength of the glue, which is the ability of the glue to bond to itself, and you're not relying on the adhesive strength of the glue. So that type of force really is what's required. Let's look at these different clamps. This clamp by DeWalt is a bar clamp. It's a small one. It's rated to deliver as much as 600 pounds per square inch. This squeeze clamp can only do about 300. On the other hand, a big clamp like this Bessie parallel clamp can deliver as much as 1,700 pounds per square inch. So different clamps will help you with different amounts of, of uh, force that they can apply to the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and put these DeWalt clamps on. I also wanted to note that I put the glue there on both surfaces of the wood. And it's not just my opinion to do that. That's actually what Tightbond says in their literature. It's also what an article by Popular Woodworking, who did a scientific study on it in November of 2004, found that that's required. And it's also an article from Fine Woodworking magazine that did research and discovered that the best way to do it is to apply glue to both surfaces of the joint. And I will include copies of all of those in the literature in the handout so that you can read that as well. That leads us to the next fact, which is that the glue must be rolled on or rubbed into the surface as well. It has to be worked into the fibers of the wood. It cannot really be merely just squeezed out onto the surface. And that's really one of the biggest factors as to why you need to have it uh, put on both surfaces. I know it might look like clamping overkill at the moment here, but I'm doing this to uh, prove a point and show you something. And uh, we're going to do some quick calculations at the end. One last thing, let's talk about clamping time real quick. Uh, for tight bond glue and for most PVA glues as well, if you clamp a joint and the joint is unstressed, like the pieces fit together fairly well, you really only need to have the clamping pressure applied for 30 minutes to an hour. And you can take the, the clamps off at that point and it'll be fine. Just finish letting it dry for about a day before you put a lot of load on it. Uh, if your joint is stressed, like in bent laminations or something like that, then you do need to leave it clamped up for a full 24 hours. And that's kind of the rule for clamping time. Now I want to show you what we have done. I have put eight of these DeWalt bar clamps on here. And if I torque them down to nearly their peak strength, I'm going to get about 600 pounds of clamping force. Uh, for each one. So six times or 600 times eight is going to be 4,800 pounds of force. So that really isn't anywhere near the 7,000 pounds of force that I said would be required had this been a hardwood. You can see how it's pretty tough to overclamp a joint. In truth, I wouldn't worry about underclamping either. If you can get about two thirds of the way there, you're fine. The last clip was a face grain glue up. Let's talk about end grain glue ups. Everybody knows that end grain glue ups are the weakest of all the joints really and let's talk about why that is. If we take a close up look at the end grain of a joint here, this is a piece of red oak. If I zoom in on this about as close as I can get, I can see that the red oak is very porous. Uh, there are a lot of the wood fibers um, have a lot of hollow tubes. There's a lot of capillary action that will occur and will actually take and wick the glue away from the surface of the joint. And so if that happens, you'll end up with a glue starved joint. Whereas if you are face grain uh, gluing these boards together, uh, you're not really exposing those hollow end grain components and you get a much stronger joint. Another reason that end grain joints are weak is because traditionally they tend to be small in surface area uh, as compared to the whole piece. Um, and if you want to make a really weak joint, we can make a joint that's end grain to end grain, and that's going to be about the weakest of all joints that we can come up with. A common analogy would be to use soda straws to explain the fibers of the wood. On the side, what we're seeing is the sides of the straws, the sides of the wood fibers exposed, which is strong for a glue-up joint. And on the end, we're seeing the hollow tubes of the wood fibers that are what's exposed and what gets glued up. And that's why the glue gets wicked away from the end grain. 
I'm going to show you the proper way to glue an end grain joint to maximize your strength. This technique is called sizing. So in this case, I'm going to be sizing this joint in order to achieve maximum strength. I'm going to put some glue on the end grain here, and I'm going to brush it in with the brush as good as I can for a few seconds, make sure that it gets down into the fibers. Then I'm going to push it in with my hand, my finger here, and get a little bit further in and try to take off virtually all of the excess that I can. Then we're going to actually let, and sit that, let that glue sit and rest for maybe 15 to 30 minutes, even up to an hour is fine, and let that cure just a little bit. When that's done, I will come back and I'll put a fresh layer of glue for the surfaces that I want to have bonded. And we'll just do everything like we would have normally. We'll brush glue onto both surfaces and then we'll glue up the joint. What I've done by sizing the joint in advance is I have allowed the capillary action to pull up all of the first glue that I put down and to sort of block those pores so that now we aren't going to have any glue being wicked away from the joint. Now notice after I put the board down, I'll kind of wiggle it around a little bit, smear it around to kind of get the glue spread evenly and to get it pushed down into the fibers a little bit more. And that's the best way to glue up an end grain joint. Now let's look at a face grain joint. We're going to put glue onto both surfaces and I'm going to use my brush to brush it into the surfaces, brush it into the wood fibers. And I'll do that on both sides. And I'm actually just kind of showing you this one one more time here because I want to show you since I have the soda straws out how I uh, use those to clean up glue that gets into the corners that's otherwise very hard to clean up. Uh, so we're going to put these together. We'll wiggle them around a little bit to uh, get the glue to bond. And then I'm going to clamp them together. Now you should always have some squeeze out along the whole length of a joint when you put boards together. That's one way that you know that glue reached the entire surface on all sides. And so I like to clean it up from the sides first and then we're going to clean the bulk of what we can away from this corner. But you notice it's really pretty hard sometimes to get the glue all the way in the corner uh, to get that removed. So a technique is to take a soda straw, use a pair of scissors and cut that at 45 degrees, press that down into the corner and we can work that along the edge and that takes up pretty much all of it. Uh, we can cut, a, cut that corner off again, get a fresh corner, start over and do it again and that will really get rid of all of it. You may have to do that two or three times for each of the corners but that's a really good way to 100% uh, clean up the glue from those joints. Lastly, I want to talk about exotics. Uh, basically, if you're in the U.S., exotics more or less refer to the wood that is grown outside of the United States. Um, a lot of wood that we get uh, comes from tropical uh, regions of the world, and the woods are very dense, and they're also very oily uh, on average. Not all of them, but the majority of them are. And these can be very problematic to glue up. So the way to do this is you have to clean them with acetone before gluing them. You want to get all of the oils off the surface. That way they'll make a good strong glue bond. And you can see the stuff that we're pulling off of the surface. This is a piece of paduk. And it's not good enough to merely put acetone on the surface and, uh, and then let it evaporate because you're, it'll evaporate and just leave the oil behind. We need to take a, a paper towel or a rag or something and actively wipe. We want to wipe the oils off the surface. So we'll wet it with acetone and we'll scrub it with a cloth to pull the oils away. This way we can get a good, strong, secure bond with whatever kind of glue we're going to use. Well, I hope that covers everything that you need to know about glue and all the different glue types that are available and where to use it and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Remember to leave a comment below if you're interested in winning some of these glues to give them a try. And as always, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to talk about mm, glue. Okay, that's it.